everyone. I'm Rich Lamont. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. So in, in this video, I want to discuss the different types of uh, bodies that are used in salmon flies. Now, with just about any fly, there's a number of different um, types of bodies. You know, there's tinsel bodies, floss bodies, uh, dubbed bodies, and combinations of, the, of them all. With salmon flies, there are also uh, split body flies and artistic bodied flies, which are, for the most part, tinsel and floss. Um, but guys do get very creative and use uh, some, uh, some jungle cock for the body. Um, so lots of different things you can do with, with flies uh, and the different materials. So when we're talking about materials, um, we'll start with this one here in the middle. This is a flat tinsel bodied fly. Um, and as you can see there, I used flat silver tinsel, but for this I used um, the Danville's Mylar, which is this right here. This is uh, the double-sided silver and gold. It's um, inexpensive, it's easy to find, and it doesn't look terrible. Um, unless you're looking at it closely, you're really not going to be able to see the difference. Um, you know, when you look at photos of them side by side, it's very difficult to tell if uh, something was made with mylar or not. Um, of course, if you're uh, going for art and going for collectible flies, using the best material um, closest to what was used uh, back when these were created is kind of important. But again you can you know use whatever you want it's uh it's completely up to you whether you want to use metal or mylar the disadvantage to mylar is that when you're wrapping it it does have a tendency to want to bunch up in spots uh if your wraps aren't exactly perfect um it also you know stretches rather easily so if you put a little bit too much tension on it you can kink that mylar and that will show up for sure um, metal is very similar. It kinks quite easily, but it also creates sharp edges. So with the metal, you can cut your thread, and if you're wrapping it around silk, you can also cause damage to that as well, so you have to be careful with that. Um, now the tinsels uh, not, can not only be used for the bodies, but they're obviously used for uh, ribbing as well. With salmon flies, you'll see a lot of double ribs, where you'll see uh, this one, for example, has a double rib. This is flat silver, and then you've got oval, oval silver right next to it. That oval is there to act as kind of a protectant for hackle. If you look at salmon flies, the hackle is always wrapped. Here's a good example. The hackle is always wrapped behind that silver, uh, that oval tinsel. That's to protect it. So when the when the fish comes in and grabs the fly, its teeth are going to want to pull back on, and and uh, that tinsel will make sure that um, the hackle stays more protected. Now, while I've got this fly, we can talk about some uh, floss bodies. This one here in particular is made with rayon floss. If you can see. Um, Black rayon, rayon in general, it's, the, you know, there's a wide range of colors out there. Um, it's not quite as shiny as silk is, and on some colors, the fibers show up more and are easier to see. Uh, instead of getting a nice, smooth, consistent look, um, with rayon, you can get a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of that showing, and that can kind of ruin the, the look of it. But uh, if you do it right, and you do it well, and you take your time, you can make rayon look very, very good. Just the opposite of rayon, well, not the opposite, but uh, this is a silk-bodied fly. Um, a lot of you may remember this fly. It's my most recent one, the Grey Ghost. Uh, this one I used um, Japanese silk on. Japanese silk is quite delicate. Um, it absorbs the oils from your hands much more than rayon wood and it frays much easier than rayon does 
Uh, for that reason, you'll see a lot of tires will use uh, gloves on their hands. They'll, uh, they'll have gloves that are made of silk or uh, you can use nit nitrile gloves or nitrile gloves, however they're pronounced. Um, that'll help protect the silk from the oils from your hands. And plus, if you know if you're uh, if you're a worker and you've got rough hands, you know you're a mechanic or a construction worker. Um, you know your hands can be rough. That can damage your silk, and that includes rayon as well. So, you know you may want to consider if you're having trouble with your your flosses. That could be a, a reason why. Um, try using some uh, some nitrile gloves. And like I said, if you decide to use uh, your bare hands, wash your hands really, really good. Use like Dawn dish soap, something that will remove the oils from your fingers. So that way it doesn't leach into those silks. Um, the other thing that you can do, which some of you may have seen in my last video, is with the um, Japanese silk, you can spool that get that onto a bobbin spool that way you can put that on your bobbin and actually tie with it that way instead of wrapping it by hand um, I prefer this method uh, I only started doing it recently but I since I've done it um, I prefer it it keeps your hands off the silk completely and it allows you to lay it down nice and smooth and flat and you have I think you got more control over it um, if you start to get twist in it, you can untwist it very easily. It's just really a good method. If you haven't seen my last video, um, go check that out. It's, it's actually a really good example of how to lay it down uh, using the bobbin method. <clears throat> With the silks themselves, uh, I'll touch on these briefly since we're talking more about the actual bodies and not the material uh, as a whole, but silks um, these are Japanese silks. They come on typically come on tubes. Uh, JEC is a real popular one. And then you've got Ephemera silk from 54 Dean Street. Uh, that comes on a spool already, and this is a single strand. So you can put this right into your bobbin and start tying. You don't even have to strip it off the spool. Uh, same thing with the Lagartin. Um, this comes right on the spool as well and you can just tie right to it. You don't even have to worry about getting it on your hands. With Danville Rayon, however, you do get, it comes on a, uh, let me get this off of here, four strand spool. So while you do get lots of floss, you've got four strands to deal with and if you're tying a fly that only requires one strand um, it can be kind of a pain in the butt to have to you know strip this off take the one strand that you need get the other ones back in place so that way they're not damaged um, it, it's kind of a pain but you know the the amount of colors that are out there and the affordability of it um, you know you really can't go wrong with it I, I don't mind using rayon uh, at all. So, uh, as far as tinsels go, uh, you know, there's there's Uni French, there's Vivas, and La Garden, and Danville's. Those are my those are my go-to's. Uh, I'm switching more over to the Vivas tinsels. Just um, you know, I think they're more vibrant. They have got, they've got more of a um, vintage look, I guess. You can see there's slight differences between the two. And plus when I'm going, uh, when I need large tinsel, the Viva seems to be a little bit bigger of a diameter than the large Uni. Now, as far as bodies go, when you're tying in your tinsels, when you're doing a floss-bodied fly, for example, this one here, when you're doing the floss bodied fly and you have to tie in an oval tinsel, oval tinsel itself is kind of thick. It's kind of, it's roundish. So when you're tying that in, one thing you can do is you can strip away part of the tip. 
in this tip here, and by stripping away that outer sheathing, you expose the uh, the core, and that core, uh, I believe, is silk. Whether it's silk or nylon or um, or whatever they put in there, I do believe it's silk. But anyway, that makes it much thinner, and you can tie that right in at the tie-in point here, um, and not have you know some huge bump right here that shows where you tied it in. That's that's a very big thing when you're looking at a fly. You know, say for example, you've got a, a fly that's got a a very exposed body having a lump right here at the tie-in point for these it's very unattractive uh, the fish aren't going to care if it's a fishing fly it, it really isn't going to matter that much but for a display fly uh, you know if you're if you're going after uh, catching people instead of catching fish you really want to make sure that you don't wind up with that bump in the location so the other way you can counteract that is when you go to tie your tinsel in tie it in all the way up at the front and all the way back so that way the whole body goes over that tinsel that's going to be wrapped on um, that'll keep the body flat and even all the way across and you won't see that bump at the tie-in point it all depends on how you're doing it um, and how what the fly is this one here I wanted the body to be uh, more thin so I didn't tie it in like that. I didn't tie it in the full length of the body. I just stripped off the, the tip to the core. And as you can see, the way this wrapped in, it came out even and smooth. On flies like this, this one's got a dubbed body. So when you're wrapping your tinsel in, it doesn't matter. You can have a bump here, you can have your tinsel tie-in point right here, and it could be the ugliest thing in the world it's not going to matter because the dubbing is going to cover that. Of course, I always tell people when you're tying, it tie every fly the same. Um, you know, find a method that works the best for you, uh, whether it's just stripping down to the core here or tying it in all the way up. But tie them all. Practice as though you're using, you're doing a floss or tinsel bodied fly. Always. Uh, that keeps you in practice and um, it makes it, it becomes more natural for you when you go to do it. So, and you'll you'll see you'll be producing nicer flies for it. One of the other tinsels uh, is embossed tinsel. Embossed tinsel is just tinsel that's been stamped. It's got little um, ridges in it. Those are used for bodies as well. They're also used for ribbing. So, when you tie these in, you always want to tie these flat to the flat to the hook shank. But remember, with these embossed tinsels, they are metal, so those can cut into your body and they can cut into your thread. You got to just be cautious of that. For dubbed body flies, um, for this one, for example, this one I used mohair. Oh, excuse me, I used angora goat rather. Angora goat is, uh, this is put off by Wapsie. Um, this is really great, uh, inexpensive way to get uh, salmon fly bodies. Um, most salmon fly patterns call for seal's fur or pig's wool, but this day and age, you know, uh, these, there's very, there's fewer and fewer people that are making them and what is out there, um, it's, the, the numbers are, it's hard to find, let's put it that way. Uh, there are places that make it, Feathers MC, John McLean, um, he's got a great um, selection of seals fur. It's uh, relatively inexpensive, um, but uh, seals fur, which I said is, you know, most salmon fly patterns call for, um, it's a little bit, it's not long fibered, it's a bit short fibered with some longer straight fibers in between. But it dubs up great and makes incredible bodies and it looks great in the water. Angora goat is a cheaper substitute for seals fur. 
Um, it's, you know, it's easier to find. And I think this package is $2 versus, uh, I think this pack, this is $4. But um, in my opinion, it's good to have them both. Um, especially when some colors aren't available for one, you can, you know, find colors for the other, I'm sure, pretty easily. And then the other uh, one I use is mohair. Mohair is longer fibered. As you can see, but it also makes great, uh, great dub bodies. When you want something that's that you're going to be able to pull the dubbing out and make it like a really nice, uh, thick body on there, you can wrap your hackle on, and then after you've wrapped your hackle, go through with your dubbing needle and just pick it out, or you can use a brush and brush it out. Um, but that gives you a really nice webby, um, fuller bodied fly. Whereas your seal's fur is going to be, it's going to be a little less. It's, uh, let's see if I've got anything with seal's fur on it. Uh, what did I do recently with seal's fur? I'm not really sure what this fly was, so, um, don't, uh, don't fault me for it. But this was a seal, seal fur body fly. I was just shooting for some sort of a, I don't know, classic wet fly of some sort. But um, I was really just playing with materials. So as you can see the seals fur here, it's not quite as full as the mohair, or the angora goat. Angora goat and mohair are very similar in how they um, lay down on a fly. Um, some other flies, the bodies, are a split body fly where you'll have some floss that ends about a third of the way up the fly, uh, usually around the second turn of tinsel, and then the rest is dubbing. In this case, again, I used Angora goat dubbing, so I'd be able to pull it out a little bit and this was for the green, this was the fly from the Green Highlander kit. One other fly I wanted to show you, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with. This fly will be going to one of you. Um, sometime within the next week or so, I'll be selecting the winner. I don't know how that glare is, I apologize if that's getting to you. But this is a sectioned, this is a double section body fly. This was all floss, except for the ribs. The ribs, you know, I've got, I've got several different ribs on there. There's uh, some very, very fine uh, ribbing that you can see. Kind of have to get close to see it, and I'm sorry, but I don't have the macro lens on right now. Um, but, you know, there's some flies out there that'll have many segments. Um, three segments, five segments sometimes. Depends on the art artist and depends on what they're going for. Um, Blacker's uh, Spirit Fly, I believe, has five or six segments of it. So um, that's one that I, I do plan to do. I will be tying that one in the future. Um, I just don't know if I'm brave enough to try it just yet. So that's a quick rundown of the the different types of bodies and the different types of materials that uh, we use in, uh, you know, creating salmon flies. Uh, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, think about subscribing. You know, I'm going to have a lot of stuff coming out. Uh, I'm, you know, every week I've got at least one instructional and one fly coming out. I try to do a couple more if I can. Um, but, uh, you know, keep your post notifications on. Uh, if you follow my flies along, you'll see each one of these gets touched on. Um, I go through all my flies step by step, so that way, you know, there's no confusion as to what I'm doing, and I try to explain exactly how it is I'm doing it and why. Um, so with that being said, um, I really appreciate all you guys that subscribe and watch. It means a lot to me, and I'm glad to see that, uh, you know, what I'm doing is helpful and helping you guys improve your, your tying skills. So, um... Until the next video, tie lines everyone. Have a great day.